whenever you are ready, the floor is yours. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for uh, having us here. Uh, it's been a great experience so far. So, I, um, we will tell you a little bit about uh, uh, our work, what we did. Uh, I will start talking about our team. Uh, we are a, a team of, actually we are friends, we don't share any work group uh, or anything similar, we just work friends from our mountain climbing club and we've got that interesting common but we all work in science and technology as well. Uh, we do lots of work in the outdoors, technology related. And so I am Javier Giuliani, I am an engineer in electronics, I am into IoT and I have uh, quite a bit of experience in snow avalanche forecasting working here in the Andes Cordillera. Santiago Rafinha, he's a um, student of geophysics and his interests are the same. And Santiago Soler, he's a um, PhD student in geophysics and he's got, he's got a strong background in Python programming. So, uh, regarding the problem, uh, when we first had arrived in here, we didn't have a clear idea of what to do, but a very big problem uh, showed right in front of us uh, the day before we were uh, coming here. So this was Monday night, uh, Diario de Cuyo said that uh, we are expecting about 30% of loss in many vines, many grapes varieties in hands of frost. So that's kind of a big problem uh, arriving in the right time for us. And so we, we, we started thinking about, okay, so what about a uh, weather forecast? What, what can we do about that? What can we do to, to improve it? And so the very first thing we, we realized when we started searching and based on our, and our own experience is that weather forecasts have lots of biases related to topography, uh, which, which are very local. Uh, and that's on top of the low resolution of the models in this area. So, the f so how can we improve this? That's what we thought. So the first idea and a very logical one for us was to say, okay, let's compare or, or let's contrast the data gathered from weather stations with, uh, with, the, with the ones, with the models, but let's, Let's do it locally and for one point in particular and, and check out uh, what can we find there. And then is, is Santiago will explain you what, what he did about it. Okay, so our goal was to improve uh, or enhance the forecast based on uh, weather station data. So what we did at first was to download um, uh, weather station data from the National Meteorologic Service here uh, on a station here at the airport of San Juan and also the Euro 5 data set for the same locations. We developed uh, two Python script for automatically download all these data sets and uh, we try to compare these two uh, the temperatures for these two data sets. Okay? So we found out that um, Year five uh, data only reported 38 percent of the freezing temperatures registered by the station. So this made year five a not so reliable tool to uh, to predict at least uh, freezing temperatures. So we computed the error of the year five as the difference between the year five temperature and the station temperature, and we. Uh, divided this error between uh, bands of temperature and plotted histograms of this error. So we we see that for low temperatures, the year five overestimates the low temperatures, uh, 
and for high temperatures it underestimates them. So this is a big problem uh, when trying to um, to product a freezing alert or heat wave alarm. Okay. So and we can see that the error of the ERA five depends on the temperature. So we can plot it against it. Okay. And we get this kind of scatter plot. Okay. And it it shows the same behavior for low temperatures. They the ERA five over, overestimate them, and for high temperatures it underestimated them. So we picked uh, two linear regression for this scatter plot one for low and another one for high temperatures and we apply this correction to the <coughs> year of high temperature okay and get this uh, this another scatter plot so if we replot the histograms but with the correction we get this and we can see that um, the over and under estimations are quite a bit gone and we were really happy about the next uh, result that we are now, with the correction, we are getting 57% uh, of true alarms and only 5% uh, of false alarms. So if we assume that the Euro 5 uh, model has the same bias as a forecast, uh, all, these, um, all these algorithms could be applicable to uh, to future, to future forecasts, to correct future forecasts, okay? So, the first thing we wanted to do was uh, a small implementation of this, to, to run it on. And it's actually, what we did is actually running in this link, so if someone is interested, you can just copy that and jump in. But anyway, it, we will show you in the slides the same that is on the website. So what we did is we modeled um, an IoT application uh, through ThinkSpeak pl platform. We programmed a MATLAB um, script, which is running there. Uh, and basically what we do is we grab Meteor Group forecast. And so we, um, we use a technique which is called web scraping. So we we get the information that is on, on a website and we gather the data from there, putting it in, in our, we process that. And we apply, to that information, we apply the correction modeling we got from the ERA-5 analysis. So those two linear inter interpolations we did, we, are, we apply that to Meteor Blue, and we get two graphs with the forecasted temperatures of the day and the correction of that okay so let's remember that this is for temperature for one point okay and so that's a little bit of our script just to show you that it's how it looks like it, how it feels is my lab most of the ones here know knows about it about that and so that's the presentation, and so we get here the pronostico corregido, which is forecast correction, and here is the comparison. And what we did next, sigamos. So we said um, we made a set of alerts, and so we've got a red alert that triggers automatically when when the forecast correction reaches near zero temperatures, a yellow alert that triggers when uh, the lowest temperature is near three centi uh, Celsius uh, degrees, and then we've got other alerts. We, we can put other alerts. This is just an example of an IoT, of an application of, the, uh, of, of, of all the data processing we did, okay? And our uh, system is currently tweeting. So, so t uh, as you can imagine, yesterday we didn't have any frost, but we we cheated the information there to to check that the the system was up and running. And so, in the case that 
tomorrow was forecasted uh, near zero uh, temperatures, we could get a, a tweet sent by that user, which is called MeteorSpot. Okay? So, see how much. But what this looks very, very uh, nice and it's fun. But it, this got one problem is that it's, it's not scalable as it as is. Because we would need to gather the information uh, for another point of interest, we would need weather information gathered from a weather, a weather station that we don't have. And so we, we thought of, of a solution. So the solution would be as follows. Just think of a weather station that connects to the very same platform or any similar platform and sends every day hourly data of temperature. And our computing, computing base, which is in the cloud, which is ThinkSpeak in this case, but could be some other one, gathers information from Meteor Group, for example. All right? And so makes models the error day to day and hour to hour and start collecting points of error and start drawing that dispersion graph uh, Santi showed you before, and through a continuous learning process, uh, not we, we wouldn't need too much time to model something like we did with ERA five, but online and on real time with this technology. And uh, sorry, and it could uh, obviously as well have the alerts thing and be able to show you the visualized enhanced uh, forecast for your place, for your point of interest. And so this could be a very interesting technology for someone who's got a particular problem of frost in his uh, vines grows or some other thing. This thing as is, is absolutely scalable because uh, the, script, the script is general, just needs to model the error and then applies a, a continuous learning rule. Okay, so what I told you works, uh, works, works based on the experience we, we got comparing era five model with weather station data uh, for temperature. And so we're pretty confident that it would work in this other condition. But to be able to know if we can do the same kind of modeling with other variables, we would need to uh, put more variables to the, to the analysis and compare what happens uh, correlating other variables like um, pressure, wind, or wind direction uh, to the temperature to see if we can improve temperature in particular, but also uh, to be able to forecast, to correct the forecast for other variables like wind or relative humidity or stuff. Okay. And, ah, and the other one, sorry, uh, is to do the, the same thing with different forecast. They have a multi-model, okay? And the conclusions. Okay, uh, thinking of a forecast enhancement, enhancement algorithm based on, from this point of view, from this focus, we, are, we think that it, it works. We may work with the information we had, uh, so that's a very promising thing. And the IoT alarm system uh, is very easy to implement, and so I'm pretty sure that this is viable in, um, in the short term. Uh, and in a global scale. Uh, and I, I just want to add that uh, if you want to download any of the Jupyter notebooks we use, you can do it. So uh, everything is here. Yeah. Uh, if, if you want later, you ask for, for those things because you won't be able yeah. to, to copy them. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation.
presentation of the last uh, team, uh, and again I open the discussion uh, on the jury or the audience. So uh, it seems like uh, we are maybe a bit tired after that long, uh, long uh, presentation view, uh, presentations. But I think uh, it was uh, it was great to see uh, see this connection and. Uh, I just uh, yeah I would comment that uh, the technology they are used, which is uh, basically up and running in the in the web, is it's, it's pretty impressive. Also. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah, we will discuss also the the value for the for the agro uh, agro uh, in the industry or uh, agronomic so of Well, anyway, if there is no other question, just a comment. Uh, I'm very impressed by your work. Okay, thank you. I hope we will be able to graduate you later for some nice position. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much.